Hello, hello, and welcome to the Sanibel Captiva Guide podcast. Today, I would like to welcome Becca Grotrian, who is the SCCF Native Landscapes and Garden Centre Manager. Now we've got that over. <laughs> that was, that was a mouthful. I didn't that think you were going to be able to do that, but you actually did I actually it. pulled it Nailed off. It. What do you mean? But you kind of had a cheat sheet down there. <laughs> not at all, Laurie. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. not at all. Okay, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Becca, tell us a little bit about what, how that fits in with SCCF and what, first of all, the Sanibel Conservation Sanibel Captiva 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 Conservation Captiva Captiva Foundation. Foundation. Yeah. Yes. Right. So SCCF stands for the Santa Bell Captiva Conservation Foundation. Correct. Which is a big, huge big umbrella. Oh, no, umbrella. Amazing yeah. organization. <laughs> organization on the island. So tell us where your organization fits into that umbrella. Yeah, so I guess just a little bit of background about SCCF. So of course you guys have had other guests on the show. We have. Um so we're a private nonprofit with the mission to uh, protect and care for Southwest Florida's coastal ecosystems. Um, And we do that mainly through land acquisition for preservation. So of course you guys know the island is very much preserved. Right, what, Um, 60% they say? Yeah, 60% between us and um, Dean Darling Wildlife Refuge and the city properties as well. These are all privately owned lands that will not be built on. They're just left native and amazing. Exactly, exactly. Left for the wildlife. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And so we also do that you know, support our mission through our different departments. Like we have our marine laboratory, which is uh, basically uh, water quality research base. We have our habitat management that does um, all of our wildlife surveys. So, you know, your sea turtles, the shorebirds, other reptiles, amphibian surveys. Um, and they also do the maintenance of our preserve land, right. like prescribed burns and that sort of yep. thing. And then we have, of course, our policy department. And then we have um, education, which is the C school. Cool. And it also kind of basically the garden center is enveloped within that as okay. well. So And Coastal Watch, too? And is Coastal that, Watch, okay. yeah, exactly. Because yeah, we had Keely on from Coastal oh, Watch. Right, and, right, nice. Which is awesome. <laughs> I have my mangrove babies out on the porch that I water every oh, day. Oh, that's Ooh. awesome. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so. and you can we check actually out do that sell if anybody needs to actually buy mangroves. But. Oh, okay. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, check out that episode. I was just going to say it's on the on the website. We'll give a link to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah she was super fun. Yeah, so, so um, where the garden center kind of fits in. So like I said, we're kind of enveloped within the education department. So we act like your typical retail garden center right. where we sell just strictly native plants. Um, we sell about roughly around 100 different species oh, wow. uh, mainly to south florida but we do carry a few like florida key species a few like northern species but we mainly stick with stuff that will work in our area just a quick message before we get back to the show we put a ton of effort into bringing you quality content so if you would like to help us share our love of the islands here are several easy ways Firstly, you can support us on Patreon. You could purchase an island souvenir from our Etsy store. You can metaphorically buy us a coffee, which is an easy way to donate a couple of bucks. Don't you prefer tea? Well, I do, kind of. Also, like and subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all things Sanibel and Captiva. And finally, show some love to our sponsors. Let them know we sent you. All the links are in the description below. Now, back to the episode. Okay. Um, so within the garden center, we do quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> so there's myself, um, the, manager, the manager, of course. So what I do is basically we have what's called a landscaping for wildlife house call consult program. Okay. Um, so that entails uh, me actually coming out to homeowners' houses and basically I'll walk around their yard with them and I'll, yep. And I'll identify the plants with them, tell them whether they're native, non-native, invasive, give them recommendations and basically answer any general questions like maintenance and that sort of thing as we go. Let's rewind a little bit and let's talk about why the need, uh, like obviously in 2004, there was a major hurricane. We lost a lot of foliage, Mm -hmm. uh, namely Australian pines, but let's, let's, uh, why is it important that the island has native plants? Why is it important that they don't have invasive species can you talk a little bit about that yeah of course i will say yeah our our native plants are really the foundation to the island um so the importance of the native plants um you know we have several different types of habitats within the island but 
you know, if you look out to particularly like mangroves, they kind of hold within like half the island in place. And we also have your beach dune system, which also keeps that in place. Okay. Um, and then basically with what we do, we, instead of trying to sell people like, I guess, a plant, you know, we're encouraging people to plant native right. to basically benefit wildlife. So it's very important for our native, you know, pollinators, our birds, right. you know, our erosion. Exact, ero- yeah, native plants are also great erosion control. So they just serve such a purpose, like all encompassing. And I think they don't the need as much watering, correct? Yeah, exactly. And fertilizer and everything that fertilizer can be damaging to the environment. Exactly. That's another reason why we try to encourage people to plant native is, mm-hmm. yeah, they're, once they're established, they don't require basically any watering, little maintenance. Right. Um, again, you're looking at almost any native species benefits, you know, bees, butterflies, birds, yeah, uh, or gopher tortoises, like anything, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a question. Yeah. What defines a native species? That's like- a great question. Yeah, so a native species, when it comes to at least Florida, is any species that was occurring prior to European settlement, so somewhat around like the 1500s or so. So how do they know? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, it's really difficult, I guess, just in, and it actually is always changing. Mm-hmm. You know, there's some species that was once considered native that, it, now, and that now they're like, look back and do the research right. and find out, oh, actually this didn't occur it was actually brought in from right so which is there's the, a lot that goes into right. it that i don't know all the ins and outs gotcha. but yeah right. but which is the major case of the australian pines which everybody right. loved them right. i mean they had that huge canopy when you came down periwinkle mm-hmm. and it was felt so tropical but and actually, they were bought in to prevent erosion uh, right. originally yeah. but they just grew too high and uh, or too big and very brittle they very brittle, yeah, yeah. They just don't do well. They destroyed well a lot storms. of buildings in Hurricane Charlie, didn't they? Just from falling yeah. down. Yeah, and being tons blown of damage. Down. And they realized they weren't good for hurricanes. So, although they were good for everything else, not good right. for hurricanes. They were good for course. shade. I yeah. think they were fast growing. So, yeah. the people could plant them. They'd grow fast. Exactly. Good that was shade, like exactly. probably pre uh, AC. And, and then like the that. other problem one is the Brazilian pepper that uh, just overtook and strangled yeah. everything else out, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, it was brought in as an ornamental because people really love those beautiful red berries that they produce Mm -hmm. but unfortunately the birds also like them so (laughs) as they eat the berries they kind of distributed it all throughout the island so it just became such an invasive like it it's kind of a tree but also will grow right yeah yeah, it can be very clambering like we'll just take over an area right i know they had a whole team called the pepper busters that would go out and actually try to do you think we've is it impossible to remove all the pepper or do you think they've done a pretty good job i think i think done a pretty good job i still see little patches of it here and there Mm -hmm. but the do you take them out when you when you see them i try to yeah Yeah. (laughs) but most of the big invasive removal at least on the preserve land we leave that to our habitat management department that kind of maintains those so yeah Yeah. because they will actually isn't there a a, a part that will go around and and actually advise people on uh, if they see uh non-native species that they get oh well becca i think becca does that she goes out to their homes or are you talking about something different well we we spoke with somebody that was saying that they they actually uh have an enforcement it oh was that city. was from the city yeah, it was yeah. The city. so yeah. which is a yeah. different department but yeah. They right have a, but yeah. yeah usually if i see it on someone's property i'll be like highly recommend you removing this because yeah if the city if a city employee sees it they will gotcha. give you a notice right <laughs> yeah. so right the city is actually will enforce mm-hmm. if you have um non-native yeah. Yeah. C- yeah. certain species on yeah. the, on your land yeah oh, okay yeah that's right yeah, so it makes sense so there's the there's the need for so uh, one of the misconceptions, I think, is that uh, the native species may be not as colorful or as bright, but you've got a couple of examples there. I'm sorry for I those do. people that are listening <laughs> and not watching, but let's see. You let's can see. describe them. Yeah, I'll describe them. Give us a, a, rich, a Richard. So why don't you lift those? Yeah, Richard what, what, Attenborough yes. description. Richard Attenborough yeah, description. We have a fascinating <laughs> species. <laughs> Right. In yeah. the Can deepest, darkest depths. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect right, right. there. All right. <laughs> All right. It's your All buddy. Right. Yeah, your so buddy there? I did want to bring this one mainly because it is one of our show year natives. So this is actually called um, Firebush. Um, so as you can see, they get these really beautiful, like tubular reddish orange flowers, mm-hmm. which, um, you know, of course, uh, 
butterflies love this plant. So okay, so great. you'll encourage butterflies exactly. to come. Exactly, and um, I also did actually see my first hummingbird this year on Sanibel. Oh at least, wow! Oh, really? on this plant. Oh no! So, way. Not this oh, particular wow. one, right? But <laughs> one on the ground. That one exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what kind of butterflies do would you expect to f- see on Sanibel? Oh, uh, we have. A lot, but really? I would say like some of our most common ones are, of course, the zebra long wings. Mm-hmm. Um, we have Gulf fritillaries. We have monarchs. We have different sulfur butterflies. We oh, have wow. we have quite a few. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to research There's some butterflies. Research, yeah. You'll have yeah. to have me come What's out to your one? yard. I know. <laughs> What's that? Frittleberry? Is that frittleberry? Frittleberry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can put up some pictures. What? What? So what? What size will that grow to? Oh, is that a bush right. type plant? Is right. it a tree or is it? So this is will get to be a pretty tall shrub. So ultimately, it can get like eight to ten feet. Okay. Um, typically, likes dry soils, but can handle a little bit of moisture. Um, and I would almost put it in like part sun, part shade. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. And you're saying it will have those flower tubular all year round or not? Yeah. It blooms uh, off on and off throughout the year. Oh, so. which is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And it can even get some nice foliage too at times too. Like sometimes you'll get some reddish growth on there. Gotcha. All right. Wow. We need a right. fire bush. So there's a cool one. Yeah. And what else did you bring for us? Oh, that's pretty too. Yeah. So this is one of our wildflowers. Bring it called- around the other side of the mic there so we can see it there. Yeah, we go. perfect. perfect. Yeah. So this is this looks like... Uh, what does it look like, Nick? Uh, <laughs> looks like a plant. <laughs> <laughs> I think that with, a great description, Dave. With purple, uh, small purple, I guess, the size of a quarter of purple uh, flowers on them. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, Becca will do a better yeah, job. <laughs> I, this is just what I'm seeing. This is not so, technical. Obviously. So this is um, one of our wildflowers called spider war, or some people might know it as Tradescantia. Oh, wow. Um, okay, no, nope, Never heard yeah. of that. <laughs> so again, it's another great one for... Um, you know, our solitary bees like this one, honeybees, butterflies, so a good attractor for that. Yeah. Um, it mainly blooms in the morning after a while, and you can start seeing on some of them the, the flowers will kind of close up. Mm-hmm. It doesn't bloom all year, but it's pretty frequent, like within like the spring and the fall. That's really pretty, yeah. like yeah, a, a cool. violet. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. yeah. Gets about two feet tall. Um, will spread a little bit by seed, but nothing like crazy. So. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, awesome. All right. I'm being inspired. And it's like good, actually, and a decent amount of shade. So, okay. H- how cool. big will it get? About two feet tall. Okay. Sometimes up to three, but I see it more. Okay. Shade for a gnome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the plants in the shade. It's not for shade. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. I'm with you. Okay, I'm sorry. Right. You're going to lay under uh, the plant. Uh, uh, so, you said you will go out to people's houses. Um, yeah. Is that. A charge for that? Your consultation? Right. Yeah. No, I'm glad you brought that up. So um, basically with the house concluded, we do ask people to become members of SCCF, um, which just includes a donation. So to include the consult, we ask for a hundred dollar donation. Very reasonable. But the um, cool thing on the island, uh, like what we like to offer is um, for new homeowners, it's a free consult. So it's a great way to educate people when they first arrive on the island about the plants in their yard and the and you know city has certain rules about right. native vegetation so just kind of educating them on that oh, and cool. then if you wanted to go into something massive like we've done since some projects with coastal vista who did uh, some massive projects which with a coastal vista is a local landscape local landscape art, architect, art, architect and yeah. do a fantastic job with all the and they're doing all the causeway project as well but oh, they, they yeah they, oh, yeah so check them out if you've got a major project it'll probably they, they would do a fantastic job for you right yeah we we do do some more on a smaller scale because we're right. very small staff but we, i do also do some design work um like say if i put together a write-up for people like recommendations after our house call original mm-hmm. house call um if they want to act on it you know i usually have people come out check out the plants i recommended and if they want to go a step further and have me put together a plan for them i can do that and then we also do um even further some plant installation as well so i did not know so whereabouts is it actually located right so we are at 1300 periwinkle way it's a little bit confusing if you've never been there so (laughs) yeah um coming from here i always tell people to look for the antique shop on the left right then we'll be the basically that next drive or we're kind of across from donax although you'll still need to make that left onto Donax. Um, but 
So we're located right next to what's called Roadside City Park. Mm -hmm. It's just like a city public parking area. Right. And so you'll see a gate on your right. And then you'll want to go through that gate. Okay. (laughs) And it's at by right by the Bailey Homestead Preserve. So it's uh, it's between Matt Salunas. We're actually located within the Bailey Bailey Homestead Homestead Preserve. Preserve. Not Matt Salunas, but the restaurants on the right. Tootsie Pupsy. Tootsie Pupsy. Lazy lazy Flamingo. And and then Ancello. And then carry on from there. Yep. And then it's, uh, yeah, pull in there on your right hand side if you're coming onto the island. Which, and speaking of Bailey Homestead Preserve, that is the original home that the Bailey family lived in and the Bailey's General Store. Mm-hmm. and they have been a, obviously an icon on the islands right. and so wonderful to the islands and everything yeah so. yeah so SCCF purchased um that property back in 2011 right um so that's when when it was purchased it was decided because we actually were located off of sand cap road that's right you were at the SCCF headquarters i Ex- guess yeah exactly yeah. um where we were formerly known as native plant nursery but with the confusion with the name, some people saw nursery and thought oh, children, you know, oh, like just weird. Like just, right, right, and right. it didn't really like encompass all of what we do, honestly. Right. Um, so once we purchased that, um, it was decided that the nursery was going to move to the Bailey Homestead Preserve. Right. Which is a great and place become, for it. Yeah, the Native Landscapes and Garden Center. Right. It is a great place just to wander around and you can feel the history of the house mm-hmm. and just see the vegetation. So yeah. I definitely recommend, even if you're not into plants or just, it's just really a nice yeah. place to visit. And we have, um, so we have eight different demonstration gardens on site um, that kind of, represent a different habitat you know found in florida so we have like a coastal scrub garden we have a hardwood hammock we have a beach dune we have even like a residential like so plantings around the house so someone oh, can look at it and right. be like this would work in my yard right. you know so it's just a great way to showcase and we have several others but it was a great way to showcase you know native plant versus seeing it like in a pot like I, this and right. then full size you know well i'm just such a visual person too that you know reading about in a book or seeing you know a picture in a book just does not equate to me but actually right. seeing it in person exactly is so much a better way to do it so mm-hmm. that sounds great yeah fantastic do, tell us a little bit do, do you do have any activities going on at the uh at your base or do you is everything and what uh, are the everything, hours, I guess? Oh, so um, our hours for the Garden Center are from Monday through Thursday from 10 until 3. As far as other activities right now, not so much. A lot of our stuff is actually very seasonal. Okay. Right? So within season... Um, so we're recording this in the summer. It's, what are we, June? I don't even know June what day 7, it is. June 8th. <laughs> June 8th. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so it's coming 22. into our slow season. Right. Yeah. So probably st- starting up you know, November, December, January, and on um, through the spring, um, we have a lot of different programs that happen at the garden center. You know, we have that pavilion there. So we have different classes offered. We have what's called the evenings at the homestead. We have um, tours. You know, yeah, and we have different fundraising events there too. Right, Fantastic. yeah, it's definitely yeah. a hive of activity. So and there's yeah. a little uh, shop too that yes. you can. Purchase. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the gifts up shop. Give, so we yeah. do have a little one. It's you know we kind of stick with stuff that kind of supports our mission. So we right. sell like T-shirts that you know support different departments, right. um, books. We you also have like sell, a little honeybee. Yeah, or we bee have hive or a real one. Houses. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so I think that's what it was orig- uh, not maybe originally used for, but it was used at one point as like, you know, for bees. So that's why they called it like the honey house. Oh, right. gotcha. so what we gotcha. referred to it as. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we also do sell honey there and tea. And speaking of which, I actually did hear you like tea. Love tea. So, so does Laurie. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. wow. Whoa. We got a gift. Oh. <laughs> Oh, very cool. Oh, fantastic. So, so I brought you some oh, that we sell there. Oh, and some cool honey. Oh, what is that? Yupon <laughs> Brothers American Tea. So American what is it? Yupon Holly. I guess it's a plant of so some sort. It's a, native, it's a native plant that um, oh, wow. they dry up the leaves and make tea out of. So it's very, very caffeinated, or like more caffeinated than coffee. So oh, really? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. We'll have to try those. Oh, yeah. So cool. And look at this. This is a mangrove 
So it's made for mangroves, or is it? No, that's like, just the name of it. Mom. Mom. So it. Come on, mom. come on, mom. 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 come on, mom. Okay. This is my moment, mom. Uh, I've been made a fool of many times on this show. How would they make? <laughs> so what honey? did you just say there, Max? How would you make honey out of a mangrove? I don't. All right, skip uh, by that. Can you take that out, please. Yeah. <laughs> that's staying no. in the final cut for right. Dad's honor. Okay. Go on, back and tell us about the honey. So, <laughs> so we have a really good. Um, relationship with um, Curtis Honey. It's a family based um, mm. uh, like shop. Business, based like business. Honey Thank makers, you. Yeah. I don't know why I couldn't think yeah. of it. <laughs> um, they're based out in LaBelle. Um, and so what they do, they keep their um, hives on our preserve land. Oh, so okay. then they'll come out and collect you know, the honeycombs and everything, right. take it back to their location, jar it for us, and then They'll sometimes come out to us and we'll go out to them sometimes to oh, grab neat. the jars. But basically, so it's kind of a seasonal thing. So when the mangroves are blooming, you know, mm. of course, the bees are going to right. yeah, the mangrove the flowers and right. then going back to the hives. So we sell the mangrove, but we also sell sea grape as well. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. So Very neat. cool. I so, can't wait to try that. Yeah. So made from mangrove bees, Laurie. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Very yeah, local. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Who's awesome. Been, who's been Do you have preparing? An online shop? Oh. Just oh, out of curiosity. Um, yes, actually I um I always miss things. So no, we that's do. Right. <laughs> so we do have an online store where you can purchase plants either for pickup, but we also do offer delivery. Okay. Um, we do the, w- deliveries every Wednesday. We usually just ask for people to as like a fifty dollar minimum. Right. You know what they purchase. But all on Sanibel and Captiva. We don't. Oh, that is we're, delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Are you mango? Yeah. Already? Oh my goodness, it's <laughs> unbelievable. It's can so people sweet. purchase the honey online? Yeah. You know? Okay. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Just for so we have to pick up, but yeah. So oh, if you go so you to the don't deliver, uh, I guess if you had honey mixed in with some other plants, we could deliver. Okay. Uh, we, we just usually ask for that fifty dollar minimum. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Just like yeah. So yeah. really good. I the, can uh, the mangrove. You plant. go to the SEFCCF website <laughs> and go to the Native Landscapes and Garden Center mm-hmm. section, and then yep. you, there's a click here to shop online section. Okay. Yep. Which Very takes you to, to the, the longest URL in history. SCCF dash native dash landscapes okay, dash garden dash center <laughs> dot <laughs> square <laughs> dot site. We'll put a link in there. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. One more question I have. Um, can I know you offer the consultation? Do will you do that for people only on Santa Bon Captiva? Right. Okay. Right. So no, but you're not going to go to. In North for, Florida. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> no. Like I said, like we're such a small staff, and right. I'm the only person who does the Actually, consults. Right. Yeah, yeah we just. Yeah. Yeah. I wish we could go into Fort Myers because I think there's a need for it out there. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there might be an equivalent in Fort Myers. Start with? Uh, there is yeah. um, what's there is uh, all native garden center, so that's a good resource to oh. use. Oh, okay. They're okay, cool. out there by Pagefield Airport. So. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So pretty central. Fort Myers, pretty there. central. Yeah, Two. excellent. No. All right, who's ready for some trivia? Oh yes, oh. please. After who's been preparing? Performance. I hope yes. you guys have been researching <laughs> native plants and oh mangrove bees. Yes. <laughs> We've got three questions today, so we'll keep it short and sweet. Keep the embarrassment to a minimum. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right, so here we go, Laurie. Thank you. What are you setting me up? My pen doesn't work or something. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the scores, the old scores. Oh, I can't scrub them off, and Laurie won. Oh, no. <laughs> all right. Flip it over, Dad. Max. There's two sides. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Okay. All right, first question. These are all uh, native plant based questions. Jeez. All right, first question is two truths and a lie. Which of these is not a native plant? So, we just so there's three, there's down. there's three three choices. Okay. One of them is non-native. Okay. Mangrove All right. Mangrove bee. Okay, here we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the mangrove. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Royal poinciana, Spanish moss, or false daisy. Which of these is non-native? Oh, non-native. Yep. Royal Ponciana, Spanish moss, or false daisy. Got it. Oh. I guess. All right, mister, I got it. What you got? What'd you Royal put? Ponciana is non-native. Yeah. I put Mom. false daisy. Royal Ponciana. Royal Ponciana. Yeah. All right. Oh. We have a two-way tie. I put the false word in there just to just, just to, to throw I you off. That. Yeah, I did think it's, that. 
It's so, a little mind trick. Why? There's so many Royal Poncianos. I know. So that's kind of the misconception with a lot of like, you know, exotic species. So like hibiscus, exora, bougainvillea, stuff that right. does well, beaten that subtropical climate. A lot of those things do well here, but they're actually not native. Yeah. Exotic, but not invasive. <laughs> so would you recommend that? People why, why would they recommend non native species? Know, right? <laughs> That's the whole point of the organization. Mom. I might not recommend it, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. they, are, they are beautiful, but not all yeah. the, all year long. Have right. them by your Christmas tree in a plant pot and then get rid of them after. How about no, that? No, brother, <laughs> That's huge. the wrong one. Oh, That's the, uh, you're thinking of. Oh, uh, the red one. No, I know which one. Yeah. Poinsettia. Oh, so he doesn't get a point because he didn't. No, no, yeah. I didn't. Yeah. He gets a point. Well. So carry on, carry on. That was yeah. like one of the few, the non-native ones I recognized. I knew if I put one that you recognized, you would probably think it was native. Uh, right. Yeah. So I fell for your mind mind games. tricks. Mind tricks. All right, one one zero. Go on. All right. Keep According on. to SCACF SCCF's online plant database, there are how many native species? Of the 483 species total listed. Say that again. Sorry, that may be an poorly worded question. There's 483 Terrible. listed species on their uh, website yeah. of plants that are on the island. Okay. How many are native? What? Ooh. So there's 483 total. How many of those are, are native plants? That's a tough one. I don't, I don't and it's on the website, <laughs> Becca. So. It is on the website. <laughs> Shows you how much I <laughs> It's actually a pretty, pretty... Uh, uh, don't say it, Max. What? No, it's don't a pretty interactive it. database. Oh, okay. it, you can't you look at it now, but I do recommend looking at it. You can sort by native, non-native, invasive, sort by name. You can look up plants to see if, if they are native or not. If That's you're cool. infringing or not with your your plants, you said out of 480. Yep, there's 483 listed. Right. How many are? How many are native? So what are the 483 that you can find? On Let me read the description. Is the that what you're saying? Each database but contains yeah. the same. Feel, 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 feel. You're trying not to give it away, aren't you? It's yeah. I don't want to read some. I always do that. <laughs> it's basically a list of so plant species on Sanibel and Captiva. Yeah. Got it. So right. found native. Or not. And okay. there's 483 total. Okay. Go ahead, mom. I put 100. Just 100? because, only because Becca said they have about 100 in their <laughs> garden. Okay. <laughs> All right. Dad, I, I you go. 162. 162? I was high. I did 350. 350. You are correct. It is 344. What? Wow. Oh, yeah. Nice. 344. Wow. So there's. I knew it had to be the majority. Someone just yeah. established there's no problem. <laughs> yeah. So there's 100 and. Oh, I guess there is. 100. 100 and. 39 is that good math 139 non-native species on the island that have been discovered wow i wow. think okay that's crazy that's interesting all right wow. i'll check that website i out. think everyone but one person is going to get this one but we'll so see back us with two yep. i'm still zero that has one, <laughs> that has one. okay that's tough i think beck is going to take this one away here <laughs> i think so too the tourist tree is another name for what native tree I know this. I know you know this. I know I know Why one person doesn't. <laughs> Why can't I think? Oh, okay. Resistance is futile, mom. You've lost. <laughs> Are you saying this is the last question? This is the last question. Well, at least I'll tie with dad. <laughs> <laughs> the tourist tree, he dad. He hasn't written anything. I know. He's gazing. I mean, hello? <laughs> Are you? I just... Freaking grates me to lose to you. <laughs> no. Even so, after coming up with mangrove bees, um, <laughs> the tourist tree. Uh, I'm gonna go. Uh, you can't write something. Oh. Are we allowed? To okay, no. Uh, no, I, 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 has absolutely it, not. Has it already been mentioned? Uh, no, mm -mm. but I've, I've done a tiktok about it oh, <laughs> done nice. it nice. okay all right okay i got it all right gumbo limbo gumbo he did write it yeah. Yeah. he didn't write limbo no, no. You know what it means. Limbo. come on come there on <laughs> yeah that's high five for me yeah that's, yeah, an, that's, that's an, a, even that podium a, even oh, podium yes. one two three <laughs> they're at the end too <laughs> all right buddy you get to ring the bell oh, for the nice. winning all right there nice win there, Becca. good nice job win. becca <laughs> well done 
three for three three for three superb well thank you so much for coming on um we've got tons of different places to connect with becca and her team so let's put those in the description below um and please do go and check it out it's a fascinating place go say hi to becca and there's lots of different places in that little area to go and check out you've got the uh, pond apple trail you've got Mm -hmm. the uh bailey's matthews you've got your place so everything there within about half bailey's matthews uh, yeah the bailey homestead bailey homestead it, yeah. so basically all in that half mile area right so. <laughs> and keep an eye out for uh activities they have going on just i think i think they have a newsletter you can subscribe to yep SCF, exactly so you'll yep. be informed of everything that's yep. happening great 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 organization Sh- show them some love um if you want to get involved in donating or and I'm anyway sure, you, you can i'm sure they'd appreciate, it, appreciate it. oh always yeah okay yeah, yeah so. within a limited base like i said we're small you know but we're you know, always in search. If you uh, don't mind, like getting, getting dirty, dirty and sweaty, <laughs> and dealing with the bugs. <laughs> there like, you go. Come on, do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, fantastic. Thanks very much for joining us, and uh, thanks everybody. Come and join us on the next one. <laughs> Okay, and a quick shout out to our supporters. Without our supporters, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Bailey's General Store, Dot Ford's Rum Bar and Grill, Spoon Drift Island Bowls, Three Crafty Ladies, Gator Bites, Tail and Ale, Priscilla's of Sanibel, Coco Di Cabana, Suncatcher's Dream, and Sanibel Cups. And don't forget to reach out to Captain's Food Water, one of our favourite island charities. Thanks very much. See you on the next one.